Hey guys, I was looking around online for more information on hardware emulation and I came across Chip 8. Apparently it's like the hello world of emulation development, so I wanted to make a Chip 8 interpreter slash emulator, and here's how I did it. The way to start out with any emulation project is to, well, read the specification. That's pretty much necessary. So I looked around online and came across many a technical reference, but the one that I found the most helpful was this one. I started off with my code base, and the first thing to do was to translate the specifications into a structure. Chip 8 has just 4 kilobytes of memory, 16 8 bit general purpose registers labeled V0 to VF, a stack with a maximum size of 16, and a few special registers. For output, the chip 8 has a 64 by 32 display with pixels that just have two states, on or off. Using my old renderer API and a few loops, it was easy to render the frame buffer to the screen. After messing about with a few interesting patterns like um, this one, this one, and of course this one, I moved on to the actual chip simulation part. Chip 8 instructions are extremely straightforward. All of them are precisely 2 bytes long and quite easy to decode. The 2 bytes can be separated into 4 4 bit sequences called nibbles, which can each be represented by a hexadecimal digit. So, instructions are normally represented by a combination of 4 hex digits or variable names. For example, the 00EE instruction is the return instruction. These instructions can also contain operands in the same opcode, like this one. 1 NNN jumps to the address NNN. In our execution loop, we can simply inspect the next two bytes and execute the appropriate instruction. The first nibble is always a static one, so we can switch on it and run instructions based on that. I don't want to go over all the instructions I implemented, but I do want to cover a few of them. By far the easiest instruction to implement was 6xkk, which simply puts the byte given into the VX register. For example, if the chip encounters the instruction 6833, it will put the hex value 0x33 in the V8 register. However, not all instructions were that simple. The most complicated one by far was definitely the DXYN instruction. To know what this instruction does, we would have to look at how sprites work in Chip8. Chip8 sprites are 8 pixels wide and from anywhere from 0 to 15 pixels tall. This restriction of being exactly 8 pixels wide allows one row of the sprite to be represented in exactly one byte. So an n tall sprite is represented by n bytes. The instruction itself has three operands x, y, and n. The last nibble, n, is how tall the sprite is which is to be drawn. The chip will look at the i register which is a special 16-bit register which stores the address of the sprite. Then it will put the sprite on the screen offset by the contents of vx and vy. But oh, you thought that was too simple? The sprite isn't simply placed there, instead it's XORed onto the screen. Basically, any 1s will just flip the pixels underneath, and any zeros will keep things untouched. If any pixels that were flipped were on before the flip, the VF register is set to 1. So yeah, definitely not easy to implement. But this really puts into perspective just how insanely compressed modern opcodes for architectures like x86 and 8086 are. For example, here's what a simple move instruction which literally just moves data from register to register looks like in the 8086. Anyways, back to the chip. The output is our screen, but what about input? According to the spec, the chip 8 has 16 buttons, labeled 0 to F. Apparently, looking around online, they are generally mapped to a modern keyboard like so. With regards to asking for key input, chip 8 has two methods. 
One of them is quote-unquote immediate mode. Where the chip looks at the state of the key currently and skips an instruction if the key is in a certain state. The other is wait mode, where the chip will wait for any input and the value of the next key that is pressed is put in a specified register. Now this second instruction is quite interesting to implement. The chip 8 is supposed to be run at a certain speed, which looking online seems to be about 500 Hz. Unfortunately, this is really bad for user input that waits, because if we keep checking for the key in the chip tick function, there's a chance of completely missing the input event. So specifically for this, this key has to be tested for every frame rather than at fixed time intervals. This is the same reason, by the way, why in Unity you're supposed to get user input in update and not fix update, because you may miss an event. As you can probably guess, this fixed time step thing is quite common, and the way to handle that is really quite easy, actually. Basically, we have to calculate the delta time of the frame, which is the end time of the frame minus the start time. Then we can have an accumulator variable which just accumulates delta times until a threshold is hit. Only when the threshold is hit can we simulate the fixed step instruction. So now the rate of our instruction step is entirely dependent on the threshold. So how do we calculate this threshold? Well, it's just one over the amount of ticks per frame. For example, if you want something running at 60 Hz, you would just keep the threshold at 1 over 60. To handle over accumulation of time, we can just convert the if statement into a while loop. But the core logic of this whole thing remains the same. After implementing all of these instructions, everything definitely worked first try without any errors whatsoever. Okay, maybe it didn't, and I had absolutely no idea on where the error could be. So I downloaded a bunch of test prompts and all of them were failing pretty badly. So the next thing I did was to add some disassembly. So if the disassembly is enabled, I would just dump the instruction into the console whenever it was run. This sadly didn't help much since I just downloaded the ROMs and had no idea how they worked. So instead of writing a test ROM myself like a normal person, I decided that maybe a single step mode was what I needed. And turns out that actually helped. Basically, when in this mode, I could click to run the next instruction and inspect the registers in the console. Throughout this video, I neglected mentioning one of the features of the chip 8, audio. I had actually never done any audio programming before, so my codebase just didn't support it. I definitely could have looked online and come up with a good API, but since I don't really know this domain, I refrained from this and decided to use OpenAL. Chip 8's audio output is very simple. All it does is look at the ST register and if it's non-zero, plays a continuous beep. This ST register also decrements at 60Hz while it's non-zero, so if I wanted to run a beep for one second, I would set the ST register to 60. Anyways, after a bunch of documentation surfing, I had this very nice sine wave playing. Anyways, that concludes the Chip 8 emulator. Boy, this was a fun project to work on. And I would recommend almost everybody to do some sort of project with Chip 8, because, well, it covers a lot of things, so almost everybody will get some value out of it. Anyways, thanks for watching, see you next time.